Good afternoon. Today we will be performing service on the Leonard Nucleus NV200LF. The video will basically describe how to completely disassemble the valve and service the device in the field. Some basic tools are required to service the Leonard Nucleus NV200LF and they are as follow. A 3 quarter inch box or open end wrench, a number 3 Phillips head screwdriver with a 6 inch long shaft, a number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, a 7 16 nut driver, a 7 16 box wrench, and a 3 8 box open end wrench. Before beginning maintenance on the device, we want to make sure we isolate all three energy sources. We do that by isolating the service stops, both hot and cold, to the device. You could also use ball valves to the inlet hot and cold to isolate. And you want to isolate the outlet ball valve, completely isolating water from the device and then drain any pressure by cracking the compression nut on the left side of the valve. For the next step in servicing the nucleus, we want to make sure we remove the box from the valve assembly. Before we do that, we want to disconnect power. It will be a plug-in wall transformer that you would unplug, removing power from the device. Then you will want to disconnect the motor wires, which is a four connector behind the valve. That is disconnected. You may now remove the box from the mounting bracket. The box simply slides up out of the mounting bracket and to the side. Basically to continue and remove the clamshell bracket, you'd use your nut driver and 7 16 box wrench, loosening the nut on the back side. Once that is loose, you can take the nut off and remove one side of the clamshell and it just pulls away and you can set that aside. For the next step, we're going to remove the clamshell guarding Two Phillips screws using a number two Phillips. Once those are removed, clean shell guarding just pulls apart and pulls away. We can set that aside. Now we take our number three Phillips. Remember I mentioned six inch shaft length. That's so you can get up beyond the guarding assembly and you remove the six cover screws. I would loosen them all first. If you find any resistance at this step or any extra resistance on the screws, I would again check that your pressure is relieved on the compression fitting on the left side of the valve. You want to make sure there's no stored energy in this device and that all pressure is drained off before removing these cover screws. So I loosen them all. With the six cover screws removed, a little twist, and pull straight up, I have now successfully removed the cover assembly from the nucleus mixing valve. With the cover assembly removed from the device, we now can do a physical inspection for any debris or any problems that we might see. There are two O-rings on the cover assembly. One is to seal, one is as backup. You want to inspect those O-rings, make sure there's no cuts or digs or obvious damage to the O-rings that would cause you problems. If those are good and the O-rings don't look overly expanded, you should be fine. You can reuse them. You also look at the shuttle surface. This is the most critical moving surface for the valve. The shuttle basically moves up and down between the hot and cold seats, the hot seat being this white Teflon disc. Always inspect the white Teflon disc making sure there's no debris on it in between the shuttle and where the shuttle seats on the Teflon disc. You would wipe it down with soap and water. If you wipe it down with some soapy water and you find that there's still debris on the shuttle, you will have to remove the shuttle from the cover assembly. That should be the only component you had to service. And you do that using a 3 quarter inch box open end wrench and an adjustable wrench on the shaft assembly so it doesn't spin. You can loosen the nut There's so a lock washer behind it to hold the shuttle in place and the shuttle spins off. With the shuttle removed, you can take this entire assembly and put it in rid lime, lime away, or CLR and water in a 50-50 mixture and soak it until the bubbling stops. Once the bubbling stops, remove the device and wipe it down. You should have a clean shuttle to reinstall. Once the shuttle is ready for reinstallation, you want to put a little O-ring lube on the exterior surface of the O-ring around the shuttle. Make sure it's got just a small amount and then take it 
and put it on the shaft assembly and spin it on. It goes all the way down until it stop. You have a lock washer and a nut. You will now need to lock the nut and tightening it with a three quarter inch box or open end wrench. Now you're ready to reinstall the cover into the valve body. Before you do that, you always want to inspect the interior of the valve body. Take a damp rag, put some water on it, and you'll go in the valve body and wipe down the white surface. The white surface being the cold seat, making sure that is free and clear of any debris where the shuttle rests up against the seat. You then take the cover assembly. You want the wire in the back of the valve on reinstallation. You'll hold it above the valve and kind of drop it in and spin it into place so the screws line up. Once you get the screw holes lined up and the wire in the back, you can now reinstall the cover screws. And then typically as a final tightening, I like to do like lug nuts on a car wheel. Go opposite handed. So I'll take one, go diagonal across, tighten it. Diagonally across, tighten it, opposite corner to opposite corner, tighten it, finally the last one, and I check the front again, now your cover screws are tight. Next, we're going to install the guard with the two Phillips screws. With my guarding reinstalled, I can move to my bracket, making sure we're underneath the black wire, motor wire. Using our 7 16 again, nut driver. Bracket is tight. With the bracket installed, now's a good time to pressurize the device. You always want to turn on cold first, making sure cold comes on, no leaks. Turn on hot next, no leaks. Once you have hot and cold to the device, double check your compression fitting that we loosened earlier to relieve pressure. Make sure it's tight, and now you can open the outlet ball valve. If there are no leaks, you can now proceed to put the box on the valve body. And the box is now hanging on the valve. You have the four motor wires. Reconnect the motor, red to red. Firmly engaging the pins. Now your motor wire is connected. You can now plug in your transformer to a wall outlet and reapply power to the nucleus valve. The maintenance we just performed should be performed on this device at least one time per year, depending on local water quality. At any time, if you have concerns or questions, you can reference the operation and maintenance manual, which can be obtained from opening the box and finding the QR code inside the box, or you can contact Leonard Technical Support at 1-800-222-1208. Thank you for watching.